In this video, I want to take some time to look at some basic networking devices and how we use them in our network as we're getting it set up. Now, first off, networks have gotten increasingly complex over the years. And so, but I want to start off at the very, very basics and start looking at a hub. A hub is probably one of the simplest devices that you encounter on your network. I would consider a hub to be a dumb device. There's really no logic to it as far as the way it thinks and learns. It does not. It simply takes information in and then broadcasts it to every port. Now, that's good because we can get the information out there. We can get our devices talking, but it's bad in a couple aspects also. First off, let's look at network speed. If we're taking the time to take information in and broadcast it to every port that has something connected to it, that takes time. So we're, we're wasting time broadcasting. Second thing is from the security standpoint. If we have a network where we need information to be secure on it, we're broadcasting to every port and we're relying on the receiving devices to know this information is not intended for me, so I'm going to dump it. What if they don't dump it? What if they take the time to record that information and look at it? So a security issue there. Now, with different levels of the OSI model, a hub is probably one of the most basic we can find working at the OSI la layer level one. The next device I want to look at is a switch. A switch with the OSI levels is typically a two. You'll hear about, an, uh, about a layer three switch, and we'll get to that here in a little bit, um, but most of the time we're going to see layer two switches. Now, with a switch over a hub, it's a little bit smarter. It actually can learn some information, so we know what device is plugged into what port. So instead of broadcasting information to every port that has a device connected, we're simply taking the information in and then sending it to that very specific port to, to the dedicated device that we want that information to go to. Now, from the speed side of things, that does help speed up our network because we're only broadcasting to that one port. Also, from the security standpoint, it helps make our network a little bit more secure because we're broadcast or not broadcasting, we're sending information to just that one port. So that's very specific for our security uh, information. Now, the next layer up we're going to look at is a router. A router typically works at the OSI layer three. A router acts as a go-between between different network segments. So we can see in our diagram here, we're coming from our switch to our router and out on the internet. Really, you can look at the internet as just nothing more than a massive network. And that's what a router does. It routes between different network segments. So we're looking at between our internal network segment and our external network segment here. Routers also have some learning capabilities. They're smart and that they can know what device is connected where in order to help send the information to the different points on our network. Now, how do we get these devices connected? Well, that's going to be looking at our network interface card, a NIC. Now, we have different types of NIC cards. The one that you're looking here is one that takes a CAT cable. It has an RJ45 jack on it. And most typically, this is what you're going to see in our networks in today's world. Now, another device here, we can see this is also has an RJ45 jack on it. It is still a NIC card. But we have this weird looking barrel connector on it. This is called a BNC connector. Now, in older networks, you probably had some CAT cable, uh, sorry, coaxial cable. Coaxial cable is thicker. It's more like what you see on your cable modems in today's world. We really don't have that in networks today unless maybe you're doing some TV broadcasting or something along those lines for a connection. Another type of network card you might interact with is a fiber optic. Now, that's not very typical in our home networks. Uh, even our business networks, we're not seeing it on a lot of devices yet. But on our, some of our major uh, servers in our network closet, you probably will see a NIC card that has fiber optic inputs on that. I do foresee in the next couple years you'll be seeing it more and more at your house uh, or definitely in your business situation. So that's just something to watch out for over the next couple of years. Now, let's take some time to look at some of the different cables. We looked at some different network cards and how they, inter how they connect our devices. And so we had BNC, we had, uh, we had RJ45, we had fiber optic. This cable here is probably one of our older cables. This is our coaxial cable. Now you will see this on your cable modem, if you still have a cable modem at your house. Uh, you'll see it on some of your older networks, and then also some of your networks that are doing TV broadcasting, you might see those on. Now what are we looking at here? We see two different cables with different types of jacks on them. We have an F-type, which is what you see in the top left-hand side, and it twists on. That's what you're going to see on your cable modem at your house or going into your cable box at your house. 
We can see that solid core little uh, tooth sticking out of there, and we simply line it up and twist it in, and we screw it down. The one that you see in your bottom right hand, uh, we can see that little spear in there also. Uh, still have that solid core in the center, but this one's called a B and C connector. It's a push and twist. You can see where that red line is on the on the picture. So we're going to line it up, and we're going to push it in, and just do a slight twist on it to get it to line up and lock in place for us. Now, what does the inside of a coaxial cable look like? We can see here we have different layers. We start off over on the outer side, on the, on the left-hand side of your screen. This is our shielding. This is just a, like a rubber, uh, rubber casing that everything is in. We go in and we have a braided shield. Here we're using copper wire on this one, and it just helps give a little bit more rigidity, a little bit more strength to it. We go in a little bit more, we have a foil shield, just helping to pro provide a little bit more insulation. And the same thing with that white shield you see. We're, just, we're getting down, just really trying to protect that center conductor, that center core of the cable is what's actually transmitting our information. So all this to protect that center core. Now with this, it becomes a very tight cable. It's very rigid. You cannot make sharp turns with it. Don't crease it. Don't try to fold it. You need to make gentle curves with it. Uh, sometimes you might have to leave a loop of cable there in order to make a coil or make a turn that you need to make. So you need to be a little bit gentle with it. Now, there's different sizes of this cable, so you'll see different diameters depending on what's going on with your network. Uh, if you're still having a network that has this, you'll see we've actually termed it thick net, thin net. So there's different terms for the different types of cable you'll be using and depending on what you're using it for. If you're using it for your network, if you're using it to send just video, uh, maybe you're using it for security cameras. So just some different things. But in most modern networks, you're not going to see coaxial cable. This will be more some of, some of the legacy networks that we're using or maybe for home use if you're having a cable modem coming from your cable box into your cable modem. But then you'll probably have an RJ45 jack coming out of your cable modem and then plugging that into your router uh, for your home network. Now, the next cable that we'll be looking at is uh, uh, CAT cable. Now, we have different types of CAT cable. You'll hear CAT3, CAT4, CAT5, CAT6. CAT5 is probably, or CAT6, those two are probably the most common that you're going to see in your network in today's world. Now, with this, this is also a twisted pair wire. Um, so we can see over on the right-hand side of our screen, we have where it says shielded twisted pair, or STP, and unshielded twisted pair, UD, UTP. Be sure you're familiar with those acronyms. If you get ready to take some certification exams, you will see those. So, but the difference between a shielded twisted pair and an unshielded twisted pair, we can see in that top diagram, there's some foil to help add some insulation to it. It's shielding to help prevent, prevent against electromagnetic interference. The bottom cable does not have that shielding. Both are good in your network. Uh, most of the time, you'll probably use the unshielded twisted pair because it is cheaper to, uh, to purchase because it doesn't have that extra layer of shielding. Now, I've referenced twisted pair. Notice we have twisted pairs here. Let's look at the unshielded twisted pair at the bottom. We can see we have a blue and white they are twisted together, a brown and a white twist together, an orange and a white, and a green and a white. So these are our twisted pairs. Now, so whenever we're lining up, they're going to work in conjunction with each other. Now, I want to go back to where I mentioned CAT5, CAT6. What that's referencing is the number of twists or the twist ratio. So we can see how these are twisted together. Now, the twist ratio, the more twists, the high, the, like a CAT6 is going to have a higher twist ratio, the more cable that it takes inside of our shielding, and so that increases our cost of the cable. So that's another thing you need to take in consideration when you're running your network cables. Not only shielded or unshielded, but that twist ratio. Is it worth the extra speed and the extra protection to have that in increased number of twist ratios, which increase your, your cost? Now, over on the left-hand side of your screen, uh, the top left, you see an RJ45 jack. This is like what you see on your network card that you plug your network cable into. The bottom left, you see, has the actual RJ45 jack on it, and it just slips in and snaps in place to that, that top image that you see there. Now, one thing with your CAT cables, they look very similar to some of our old telephone. If you actually had an old telephone line, old landline in your house, it had a very similar looking jack on it. The difference between them is simply the size. The look of them is the same. But uh, a telephone jack is an RJ11, whereas for a network cable, it's an RJ45. Um, but they work pretty much the same as far as the way they plug in and the way they unplug from your network cable or from your network jack. Now the next device we want to look at, or the next type of cable I should say that we want to look at, is fiber optic. 
Now, fiber optic, you're going to see it becoming more and more into your networks, and you have to decide, is it worth the cost to put it into your network at this point? Most of the time, you're going to see it as a backbone uh, between buildings, maybe for a long run. Uh, you're not going to see it for just typical short runs in your network at this point. That's probably to come, though. Now, what we're looking at here up in the top is really not a good picture. Uh, let's see. I don't have a good picture. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but So let's look at this top picture here. We can see the orange outer jacket. Here again, we're providing some shielding for you. We're providing some protection. Then the strength fibers, that yellow looking stuff, it's simply to prov provide some rigidity and help give a little bit of strength for that inner core. Now that inner core, we can see here, we have a, it looks like a blue wire and kind of a red wire. Those are, this, those are strands of plastic or strands of glass. So just like with our, cat, or with our coaxial cable, with our fiber optic cables, we have to be very careful. We cannot do a hard bend on them. You will break the, those inner fibers. And since we're relying on light transmission for fiber optic cables, if you break that, that inner strand, then that cable is dead on you. So we're going to do gentle bends with it. Uh, we're going to work, work our best to protect that. Now, with fiber optic cables, we have different types. You can see our bottom left, we have a single mode fiber and a multi-mode fiber. Now, with a light transmission on a fiber optic cable, it can only go one direction. So we have simplex and we have duplex. Duplex is, is two-way transmission, simplex is one-way transmission. So with that cable we have in the top right, we're allowing for duplex transmission because let's say the blue cable has information going and the red cable we're receiving information on. So we can do two-way transmission with that cable. Now if you think back to that network card that I showed you for the, where it had the fiber optic inputs on it, you notice there were two little black barrels on that. That's because on a network card we needed two-way transmission or duplex uh, for our signals. So that's what we're allowing for here, these two different cables to plug in. Now let me get back to where I was talking about single mode fiber and multi-mode fiber. Single mode fiber is great for long runs. It's a single beam of light. You're transmitting information, one piece of information at a time. It's great for really long runs. Uh, you typically see that maybe if you have uh, fiber optic connections between your facility and a facility that's across town or maybe even in a different part of your state. Now for multi-mode fiber, we're looking at light transmissions at different angles in the same cable. Now we're still only going one way, but we're bouncing that beam of light at different angles so we can transmit more information at once down that cable. That would be good, for instance, maybe in a backbone at a college where we have fiber optics linking different buildings together. Uh, Multi-mode fiber would probably be a good uh, thing to do there. Now, with fiber optic cable, just like with coaxial, we had that, that solid core in, in a coaxial cable. Same thing with fiber. We have that glass rod or that glass uh, string here in the middle that we need to be very specific in lining up. We're using light transmission, so it's not very forgiving if we're misaligned. Here we can see a couple different samples of different types of fiber optic jacks. ST uh, over on your left hand side and SC, those are probably two of your most common ones that you'll interact with. Uh, the, the ST really looks like a BNC connector. It has the rod that sticks out. We're going to plug it into the jack and do a slight twist on it uh, to lock it in place. With the SC or, or the straight uh, the ST stands for straight tip connector. Um, with the SC, it snaps in. So we're going to plug it in and you'll feel just a slight snap as you're placing it in. You'll notice on the bottom of that picture it has just a slight tooth on it. And so there actually is a specific up and down on the cable. And so you'll line it up and be able to snap it in place as you're, as you're getting, in, getting it snapped in. Now uh, these other connectors you'll probably encounter over the years if you're working fiber optic connector. Uh, but it's not something we're really worried about uh, at this point, but just be aware of them over the years as you're playing with your networking. So now what we can see here is we've gone over a couple different things as we've been working through this video today. We've been looking at, um, at network devices, we've looked at hubs, we've looked at switches, we've looked at routers. So just remember the differences between these different, these different devices and how they've gained in complexity and smartness. We've looked at different cables and how they interact differently with different speeds of them. So coaxial is going to be our slowest, fiber optics can be our fastest, twisted pair is still probably our most common in our network. So as you're experimenting with different network devices, uh, depending on the legacy, if you're in an old network or a new network, on what you're going to encounter. So you just got to be prepared for those different devices. 
but most of the time, at this point in time, I still feel that twisted pairs would be your most common one. I would take, encourage you to take some time to watch some videos on how to actually uh, set up a uh, RJ45 jack, actually learn how to make them yourself. As a network technician, that is something you will, you will encounter. It's really not a hard process to make your own cables, uh, so I would encourage you to watch some videos and expand that knowledge base for you. Hope you found this video helpful and informational. Until next time. Thank you.